Daniel Stahl, welcome to Throws Talk. Thanks for giving up your time today. Yeah, thank you. So here we are in London. It's the uh, third of the Diamond League competitions, and uh, so far you're doing pretty well in the Diamond League. It's been a good season for you so far. Yeah, it has been going really well. Yeah. The most important thing, though, is that last week was pretty special for you because you uh, finally took the Swedish record of Ricky Bruch in uh, throwing 71-29, world-leading throw. So tell us a little bit about the lead up to that competition and what you were thinking and expecting. Yeah, my goal was to throw far and win that competition, at least throw PR. And then uh, it was really great win. Came from the northwest uh, wind from the ocean in Stockholm, called Malo. Yeah. yeah, it felt really good. The technique was okay, but I felt really powerful and a lot of speed in that throw. Yeah. And uh, there's so much more in the technique I can work on in the future. And, uh, yeah, it was an excited day, it was fun. I threw the first round 68 88, and the second round uh, foul, yeah. and then I did it the longest one in the third. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Coach told me that you can stop here right now if you want, or you yeah. can continue if you want. And I was thinking, ah, come on, let's yeah. throw far and have fun. Yeah. So I did the two more fouls, and then the last one was just the scoopy one, right. 62, right. 50 something. Yeah. But it was a great day, it was a historical day. Yeah. I was really happy. Yeah. Uh, this record has been since 33 years ago, he yeah. did it. So, um, and, and what is it, tell us about the, the legend of Ricky Bruch, because I know you were a, a big fan and follower of, of him. Did you get to meet him at all? No, but he called me three weeks before he died, and he said yeah, I was a huge talent, and uh, that if I just focus and have fun and throw far and do your best and be injury free, I can be a really good guy. Yeah. I throw it. And he also was a special character, and that was um, made him beloved of the Swedish people. And, and you also have a, a character that's uh, enjoyed by many uh, in Sweden. It's yeah, brought yeah. you a lot of attention. Yeah, but I think he's much more bigger. I mean, he was an actor. Yeah. He uh, had a lot of lecture, lectures about um, training, uh, power training. Uh, discus throwing and all that kind of stuff, and he was a showman also. Yeah. And, uh, he was not just a discus thrower, he was a really nice guy with a big heart, and he really wanted to go to the 84 Olympics in uh, Los Angeles, but he didn't make it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, then he was it that year, I think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then he aimed to throw the discus record, mm -hmm. Swedish record. So. Yeah. so he did it when he was 38, so there's not many people, I think, in all time who have done that. No, but also that, that's got to be good for you. You're 24 yeah. now, so you've got another few years in the sport to emulate uh, even some more spectacular distances. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. So uh, now I'm going to climb up higher in the mountain and yeah. throw even further. Yeah. And uh, yeah, of course, my goal in the future is to take a lot of medals. And so th this year has been obviously a breakthrough year for you in terms of the world scene. Last year, let's take it back a little bit because I know you were not happy and I know your coach Viestin was not happy with the performance in Rio. So tell us what happened there and, and what you did after Rio to, to try and uh, make up for that. Well, I was pretty strong. I was a little bit heavier than I am now. I lost some, a couple of kilos and uh, I was inconsistent in the technique. I did a lot of fouls in the competitions, yeah. around four to five fouls in every meet, and that's not good for the stability. And, uh, and I had too much expectations to make the final in the Olympics. And uh, yeah, I thought that it's, it, it's going to be easy to make it, and uh, I was wrong. So first round I threw a really easy 60-28, I think. And second I did too hard, yes. and then third round I did too much with upper body, so it went 62, 20 something. But I still came 14th place. Yeah. But the whole Swedish people thought that I was going to the final easy. But yeah. So I was, I think, a little bit over cocky that I will make it easy. Yeah. But it's Olympics is tough. So. Yes. But it was a great experience, inspirational to see other athletes, all kind of other sports. And yeah. But it's also important that Viesti and your coach has always talked about you being ready for 2020. Yeah. So 2016 is a bonus and it's a learning experience. And what did you take away from that? What did you learn from that that you've applied to this winter and this season? Yeah, I got much more, how do you call it? Revenge, revenge after Olympics. Yeah. At least that after the Olympics, I went to the Swedish Championships. I threw world leading throw. Yeah. And then uh, Swedish Finnish match thing champion is called. I did 65-50, and then the last one in Brussels, I won. So I got so fired up for the fall training and winter training that I'm gonna yeah. try to beat the 70 meter mark. Yeah. And I've been really training really good. Yeah. Uh, 
we have been mostly focusing on technique yes. and also I've been more powerful and lost a couple of kilos, pounds. So yeah. yeah, it's great. And also in that, the technique, I know it's also important that you're not fouling so much. And these last few competitions, particularly the Diamond League competitions, you've had uh, you know all, all the throws or five or six valid throws. That's been important for this year to give you that consistency as well. Yeah, exactly. Especially in the first three rounds we've been working on yeah. in every meet so I can also try to do it in the World Championships in the next four yeah. weeks. So. so the Diamond League has been pretty interesting because the youngsters are coming through. Yourself, Frederick Dacres uh, is coming through and some of the others. And we see some of the old guard um, like uh, Malakowski and, and uh, maybe uh, Robert Harting, um, you know, struggling a little bit. So, what do you think about the youngsters coming through? Yeah, it's great. Uh, I mean, the next generation is coming up, and uh, I think the Malachowski and Harting and all those big names uh, counted also. Mm. Uh, they have so much routine now, so they can easily go to final in the world champion. I yeah. think all of those three can throw really far in world championships yeah. and I have a lot of respect for them, they're great guys uh, yeah. and uh, also I think it's going to be the young guys like Weiss Heiding and Gudsius, Milanov, yeah. Dakres and me and yeah. a couple of other youngsters can also throw far yeah. in world championships so it's uh, yeah it's next generation now yeah. and uh, this is going to be a great future uh, for the women and the men. Yeah. So. And do you see any trends amongst the technique in, in these guys coming through? There seem to be a few, the, the young guys are fast and athletic. So that's, uh, that, that's uh, uh, some, some good stuff to work on. People like Dakrez is uh, certainly a, a special physical talent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's really fast also. Milanov is really fast. Yeah. Uh, Goods is also. Yeah. And uh, I'm more kind of a brutal guy, like in the power, yeah. the release. And uh, not so good technique, I think. Yeah. But I have a lot of power when I throw. Okay. So, uh, and uh, yeah, wise hiding here, good technique. Yeah. It looks like when he throws. Mm. So it's. Yeah, it's different guys, different types of throwing. Yeah. So, so you call yourself a power guy. You're you're coming from a, a good strength background in the weight room. I know that's what you love to do. Also, lift uh, squats and deadlift and <laughs> yeah. as much as anything else. So, so tell us a little bit about that background and, and particularly the, the the place that you train in Stockholm. You have a great little gym that you train at, right? Yeah, I train in the middle of downtown in Stockholm, yeah. minus third floor. It's called Gruvan. If you translate it, it's called the Miner. Okay. So uh, all the legends of lifting have been lifting there since they opened up the gym in 1934. Yeah. But the club started in 1925. Right. So uh, yeah, all those former workers, like all those guys, miners, miners, miners who worked outside in the cold winter, they went there for extra training. And, so yeah, it's. I can recommend you guys if you want to visit Stockholm, come and train there. So yeah. I can show you guys. There's also sauna, yeah. but you can imagine. I, I will take you there also. You can imagine you go to an apartment. Yeah. Like there's a big apartment uh, building. Yeah. When you go inside there, you think it's gonna be like a normal apartment, but yeah. it's like four rooms in the kitchen. But when you open up the door, it's a uh, weightlifting. Yeah. Room, just yeah. bars. We have around 20 bars. No, okay. no, no, around the 15 maybe. Yeah. And uh, Aleco weights. Yeah. We have only one machine. Okay. It's for uh, Lapo. So, yeah. so uh, I'm sorry about CrossFit and those kind of guys can come. Just weightlifting <laughs> and powerlifting. So. Yeah. And I also, they're a good support group for you as well because they love to watch you lift heavy weights and throw uh, yeah. certain weights around the uh, the room. Yeah, there's actually more girls than men who are lifting there. It's pretty popular right now in Sweden with uh, women's weightlifting yeah. and also the men. So uh, I have around 15 people always around me. So yeah. we have to use the same bars. And so there is maybe around six platforms. Yeah. And yeah, so it's kind of always tight and you scream at each other. And yeah. And um, in terms of weight room, what's your what's your favorite exercises and what do you feel you're best at that that uh, helps to your throwing most? I love the deadlift, sumo deadlift. That's my favorite right now. Before it was back squats, but I've been better now in sumo deadlift. Yeah. And for me, deadlift and the back squats is important. Uh, I always do it two days before the meet. Yeah. Pretty heavy. Yeah. Then I feel really fast and powerful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't like bench press so much or incline. 
I've always been so weak in upper bodies. Yeah. yeah. But this year you managed a, a milestone on our training camp in America. You you got your 200 kilo bench press for the first time. So. Yeah, but yeah, 210. But then yeah. of course everybody is talking about this pad I had. Yeah. But it's, I, I used the pad because of the speed. Yeah. Uh, so I can have it. Yeah. I think when I throw the discus was right. speed of the release. Yeah. And the other exercises that are important for you, power clean and uh, clean pulls and these sort of exercises. Yeah, I do clean pulls, uh, snatch pulls. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so. not more, not more cleans actually. Right. I do it sometimes light, but yeah. not heavy at all. Right. And in terms of uh, throwing, you've been uh, working with Viesti now for four or five years. He's taken you on as a youngster, and uh, everyone's known of you as a, a super talent, but uh, needed some guidance, and and it's been a, a good journey over those last uh, three or four years. You know, certainly uh, 2014, you made a big breakthrough with 66 meters world-leading throw. So, and how's that journey been for you? It has been those six years. I started with Vesta. I remember 1st October 2011, and it has been like upside down. Like really good training, really bad training. Like not only in training, about the social life also. Like yeah. you have to do all those kind of steps if you want to be a good thrower. Yeah. Uh, not just throw far. I mean, you have to have a good lifestyle also. Mm. So yeah, so it's a lot of technique, yeah. just technique, 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 and yeah. a lot of lifting and always in pain and uh, you have to have a good mindset if you yeah. want to be a good thrower yeah. and uh, focus forward and All right. also have fun, yeah. like what you do, yeah. when you do it yeah. and don't throw because it's boring, I mean yeah. you have to love it if you want to throw. Yeah. And you also have a good group of, of uh, athletes that you train with as well, that helps. Yeah, yeah, a lot. I have now some Swedish guys and girls, yeah. one girl, Fanny Rose and Simon Pettersson and Jakob Garling Hans and uh, Niklas Arenas and Leif Arenas and uh, from Bosnia, Mesut Pezer, yeah. Chopper guy, and then uh, Marcus Thompson, a new talent from Norway in Chopper. Yeah. And also, uh, <coughs> yeah. yeah, so there's uh, plenty of guys. Yeah. And in terms of looking forward now, we're here with the Diamond League, but also we're uh, about uh, a month away from the World Championships, a little less than that. What's your preparation like for, what are you expecting for the next few weeks? Uh, after this meet in Diamond League, I'm going to go home, yeah. have a couple of days of fishing, maybe yeah, some active rest. Yeah. Then I will train pretty hard uh, before the World Championships. The next meet, meet I will do after that is uh, 25th in Karlstad, yeah. Grand Prix, in, yeah, in Sweden. So, and then after that again I will pre preparation for World Champs and I will fly in at 2nd of August. Right. So you're going to stay in your training base, uh, I spoke with Viestin and you're all going to stay in Vecco and, uh, and, and train there with the group, so that will work well. And, yeah, and pre-camp in Vecco before World yeah, Champs, yeah. Yeah. but first I go to Stockholm a couple of days. Yeah, and then also for the World Champs, you've, you had experience at the, the last World Championships, you, you qualified right at the last minute, you yeah. got inv invitation, yeah. but finished fifth in the final, so that was a, a good result for you. Yeah, it was a breakthrough actually, I came in as a 31st. Yeah. And then uh, I had no expectation. I just went there and had fun the whole week with the Swedish team and yeah. the Fisio guys. And uh, it was so much fun. A lot of laughing and a yeah. lot of like, yes, I was almost like a clown almost. Yeah. <laughs> but that resulted that yeah. you have to have fun and not just be yeah. in the room and get like a, be like a fridge and be tight and serious. And, yeah. Yeah. So going into that championship where you didn't have any expectations and you just were having fun and came out and did very well. Um, what do you think now, where, where the expectations may be a little difficult, um, because you're now the world leading thrower, so the focus is a little more on you. What do you do to deal with that? How do you, how do you make sure that that doesn't impact on you negatively? No, I don't think about it at all. I don't think medals. I don't care if I, uh, I of course I care. It's fun to be the number one in the world leader, but uh, no, I actually don't think about the medals, and I have no pressure at all. I'm working with. A psychologist from Sweden, yeah. The company and yeah, we're just gonna go there and throw far yeah. and then see what happens yeah. and then make the final first and then yeah. throw in further in the final. So, yeah, it's gonna be a great challenge. I have eight guys yeah. in the world right now, so we can throw really far. So, so, it can be a lottery. So, and you were telling me earlier that when you uh, set the record, the uh, beat Ricky's record, 
um, 71-29. Of course, that, that takes you above a few very uh, great legends of the sport, not only Ricky, but people like John Powell and Mac Wilkins. And uh, yeah, I think you had contact with Mac after that. What did he say to you when you... Uh, when no, you I, wrote, I wrote to him, yes, I did it. Yeah. And he said, what did you do? What did you do? And I said, well, I threw four. Yeah, but what did yeah. you do? And uh, yeah, so I wrote 71-29 and then he wrote a letter to me. Yeah. And it's, it's a uh, secret for me, so I won't yeah. mm -hmm. tell it to the other people out there. And, uh, but it was fun, like, I've, I've told him also that I feel like one of you guys now because I've been having those guys as yeah. uh, idols, yeah. like you in the shot and like West and, yeah. and Gerkante and all those guys, and Piotr Harting, yeah. uh, Paul, Imrich Bugar, yeah. Fazekas and everybody, so uh, it feels really good like yeah. to, to be, be one of them. Club. Be in that uh, that group of 70 meter throwers. So, yeah, uh, 70 meter throw. Yeah, exactly. And and you got to know Mac a little bit over the last couple of years with training in in America and, uh, and and got to spend a little time with him. You must enjoy spending the time with with those kind of guys, those legends, and uh, and um, they've been valuable to you in the experience. That you've, yeah, it's you know. it's nice to talk to Mac because he shares his old stories about Ricky Bruce and uh, like other throwers. And he like how he was thinking when he was throwing, how he was training, and so it's nice to share with people that have thrown over seven meters. Yeah. he's a funny guy also. You know yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Now you you always talked about throwing 70 meters this year and that you hoped in the future that you would get the Swedish record so it's come maybe a little early for you so in, in your thinking but that's also having had a goal like that you have to reset those goals right that's important now so so what's your thinking going forward having got the Swedish record how do you keep the pressure on yourself to keep moving forwards no I just look forward I don't look back and uh, of course I really like when everybody Things that I have. I'm gonna take a gold medal now in World Champs, or yeah. I'm gonna throw really far, and that's nice. Yeah. Then it, people are interested yeah. to follow discus and throwing, and yeah. uh, I'm actually gonna try to do it. I mean, that's my goal right. to take the gold. But if I don't do it, yeah. I don't, I'm not gonna die. No. And I, I have at least tried that achievement, so yeah. uh, then I'm doing next goal and next. Goal. But my no biggest goal is to take the world record. Right. And that's going to be. Um, that's, that's stood for quite a while now. Yeah. So yeah. also uh, over 30 years. So it's a uh, it's a good uh, good mark to go after. Um, have you talked to Jürgen Schulte at all about about that throw and that record? No, you know, actually, I have not. Because okay. that was interesting that he told me he threw it in a tailwind. It was a big tailwind. So, um, so that made it very interesting, and uh, certainly said it obviously helped. But conditions are an important thing. You, this throw is 71.29. How did that rate amongst all of your great throws that you felt have been good throws? Because you said there were good conditions. Yeah, was it, it was really good. It, came, it was like Salinas yeah. wind came from the right from the ocean, and uh, yeah. it blew maybe around eight to ten meters per second. So it was crazy wind. Yeah. And uh, if you compare it to Jurgen's world record, it's, yeah. it's bad, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but I still threw it. But for your, how does that 71 meter rank in terms of your feeling of your throws? How close is it to, a, to the best throw? Was it as good as some of your others? That, or do you feel there's more in the tank? Uh, 68, 72 last year was the best technique. Yeah. 71, 29, it was a lot of power and speed. I never felt this power and speed before. So it was better technique last year in that throw than yeah. this big yeah. one. So uh, yeah, I have a lot of technique to work on in the future. Let's see how far it goes. Yeah. And the other thing, you don't always go searching for big wins. That's what I like about the competitions. You've thrown in some some nice places, but you're not that interested in going to hunt for the, the great conditions. And you like to throw whatever disc is, whatever conditions, wherever you are. You just want to get on with the job, right? Yeah, actually, I'm back home. I train in tailwind. That's yeah. my, I want to do it like heavy tailwind to yeah. train for all those big meets and all those kind of championships. And, yeah. and uh, Always a thrower says like, oh, you can, you can throw far without a good wind. Why? I say, yeah, it's because it's easier. Yeah, but don't think about it. It's psychology here in the brain. Just yeah. throw, throw, throw as hard as you can, yeah. and it will be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I've thrown 
I think 69 in meters in tail width. Right. So I mean, like everything is possible. You yeah. don't need to. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. also the Javelins always think about the wind tail wind, tail wind, tail wind, but we think yeah. the opposite. But yeah. don't think about the wind. Just look for it. Daniel, good luck in London. Good luck with the Diamond League as well. That uh, you're in a, a good place to, to try and win the overall Diamond League. So hopefully you'll get some more points for that. But particularly the World Championships. Wish you a lot of luck. And thanks for sharing this time with us. Yeah, thank you very, thank you very much. <laughs>